we're going to roll right into the last pick on the cold list this week, coming from Mike Morello. Hey, everybody. Uh, Mike Morello again from CBSI's Cover Tunes, and it's that time. It is cold pick time. Um, and this week is not going to be a popular cold pick, but it is true, um, and it is Naomi, especially Naomi number one. Uh, mostly I'm going to talk about the A cover, but the B cover as well. Um, right now there's a big lull with this character. Obviously her first arc just ended. Um, DC still hasn't done anything, even though they said they had big plans for the character. They have not yet delivered on that promise. However, I think they will deliver on that promise eventually, and this book is going to get hot again um, when she pops up in something bigger, either a movie or um, some big book um, where she crosses over with a character. And when that promise comes to fruition, I think uh, you'll see these go back up. Probably not to the heights that they once did. Um, at one point, uh, the re initial values were, were driven by the story and the character, which is really awesome, much like Immortal Hulk was. But then, of course, FOMO kicked in and, uh, and prices skyrocketed. At one point, a 9.8 sold for $587 of cover A, first print. Um, just last week, um, the same 9.8 cover A, first print, sold for 108 um, Across the board, prices are down about 40 to 50% on raws and on graded. Um, you can get multiple graded copies right now for 125 bucks, 9.8, first prints, cover A, um, whereas the average on that book was over 200 bucks just a couple of months ago. Um, raws are in the same boat. You can get uh, raw copies for 30, 35 bucks right now. Uh, again, A cover, whereas a couple of months ago, the average was 70, 65 to 70. Um, B covers are faring even worse. You've got... Um, the same kind of deal happening with these. Um, the the percentage is roughly the same that it's down, uh, but prices are lower across the board on the B cover. You can get a nine eight of the B cover right now for seventy bucks, um, and raws you can get for twenty five or thirty bucks as well, um, which is pretty bad compared to what they were like a couple of months ago. I've been to a few cons already this season. I've seen these on the wall at twenty five and thirty dollars raw, and uh, they're still sitting on the wall at the end of the, at the end of the show, um, which is not a very good sign. So at the moment, they're cold, um, but I really think that will change. I think DC will deliver on their promise to do something big with this character. So if you missed the boat the first time, now is a really good time to buy the book. Um, and if you're still sitting on some of them, I would say do not dump them, hold them. I believe they will go back up at some point in the near future. But for now, unfortunately, they are cold. So that's my cold pick for the week. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one. So there it is, Jack. Mike's cold pick, Naomi. We've talked about this on the show when it was hot it is no doubt kind of slumped a little bit but it's also in kind of a hiatus period right we just finished the run as mike said you know what a lot of the hobby lacks is patience right if they they we keep being told that the dc has big plans for them it hasn't come to fruition yet so people are starting to dump their books but as mike said i think it's a great opportunity to be picking those up now if you don't have any loyalty or faith in this character by all means get rid of it but i for sure if i can find them cheap enough especially that cover b that lupacino variant for cheap if i find that for 60 70 bucks at a 9.8 i'm gonna pick me up a copy but what do you think jack well i think people who watch the simple men's comics youtube channel on a regular basis know i'm very bullish on naomi um i don't think there's been a more polarizing character in the hobby in the modern game in a very long time talking about a character that as soon as she was created as soon as she hit the pages of dc comics immediately got mainstream media attention and um a slogan that i use on a regular basis here on the channel is follow the money brian michael bendis this was his big creation upon coming to dc comics i've never seen an acquisition of a writer get more publicity than him coming into dc comics um the, his position within dc comics is a position of authority he is kind of their main writer right now. And I know that he's a polarizing character. People love him. People hate him. Doesn't matter. He gets talked about a lot. And the key is DC is behind him. So Mike mentioned her showing up in another series. You just mentioned it. Well, Bolo, because Action Comics 1015, Naomi appears on the cover of Cover A. She is crossing over into Action Comics. Um, it's a great looking cover. I personally have pre-ordered several copies in expectation of that issue being popular. I also think that Action Comics sometimes gets under-ordered. Um, so, you know, I definitely think that that's one to be on the lookout for. And I agree with Mike. I personally pulled my Naomi's off of eBay. Um, I don't like the prices they're going at now. I'd rather hold on to them. 
I'm sitting on a 9.8 of the cover A, a few cover A's of first print, um, some second prints, some third prints, you know, num- issue five, some of these other popular issues that I've got some sets. I think that Naomi is going to come back in the market. I think you hit the nail on the head saying that, um, you know, speculators, hobbyists in general, there's no patience. Um, And this was also a character where we saw the comic book politicians come into play. And what I mean by that is when the issue shot up in value, again, no doubt it shot up because of the mainstream media attention which brings in the casual collector, the casual buyer. These copies got bought up. Every speculator ran out and bought every copy they could, put them on eBay. You immediately saw the people who missed out talking negatively about this book. But one thing that makes me feel solid about this book is the reader buzz. Readers enjoyed this six-issue series. Not every issue was a home run, but in general, those who read the series enjoyed it. And That plus the mainstream marketing, plus Brian Michael Bendis, plus the fact that we already know she's coming into the action comic series, and that's just the beginning, makes me feel really good about this character. I also think with the DC Comics movie slate being a mess, um, there's a good chance that we could see Naomi at some point, whether on the small screen or the big screen. Anything is possible. And uh, once a character gets hot, these publishers are quick to try to capitalize on that heat. So I like Naomi as an investment. I think that if you've already invested your money in Naomi, then I don't have to sell you. Now is the time to go back and continue to add to your Naomi stockpile. And like Brian said, if you were against it from the get-go, you're probably sitting around saying, see, I told you so. But If I'm right about my initial statement that the reason why this book took off in the first place is the mainstream media attention, which now has become, say, yesterday's news, that can happen again because we know that there's going to be another Naomi series, that they're just taking a break for the artist to work on some of his other projects. And when they come back and Jamal Campbell gets back with Brad and Michael Bendis and we get another arc and it comes after whatever revolutions we're going to get, um, from Naomi coming into the action comic series and who knows what other series, at some point, these books are going to heat up again. I'm almost certain of it. And the value and the prices that they're sitting at now are just too low. And um, we'll probably see significant gains. And I think you made a good point pointing out the cover B, Rubikino variant, which just never saw the heat that the cover A Campbell book did. And I, we talked about this on the channel before. I think that's largely because when these mainstream media sources, and I'm not talking, when I say mainstream media, I mean, not comicbookinvest.com, um, not even comicbook.com. I'm talking about when CNN, when Time Magazine, when the New York Times, when their websites write articles highlighting a comic book series, they tend to only show that cover A. It doesn't matter whether it's an independent series or one of the big two. And When that happens, that's where we're seeing the trends of cover A's doing better than cover B's. We've talked about it with indie books that get optioned, and now we're talking about it with Naomi. But I really think that that cover B is just massively undervalued and a great pickup if you can find it low. So like Brian said, if you believe in Naomi from the get-go, then you're probably in a buying mode right now. And if you never believed at all, then you probably feel validated for that. But either way, this is a great cold pick because it's a really accurate depiction of where the market is today on Naomi. But like we talk about, where it is today isn't necessarily where it's going to be tomorrow. Right. <clears throat> I'm not big on Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. I'm not big uh, that big on Riri Williams. But I do kind of like Naomi. I've enjoyed the story. I love Jamal Campbell's art in there. Some people don't like it. But another thing I think of is how popular was Miles Morales when he just came, when he first came out? Right. right. And those books were cheap for yeah. so long. People forget that. Yeah. And who created Miles Morales, by the way? Brian Michael Bendis. So so you never know. I'm not saying this is going to be the next Miles Morales, but I am. For that low buy-in, I'm willing to take the risk on it. <laughs>